company called Monolith. We're based here in London. And I think we built a real world banking alternative. So I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit and what that means. Um, so hi, I'm Michel, <laughs> I'm a web geek, um, and I'm an Ethereum geek. So on top of Ethereum, this trust computer, we built something which is the only non-custodial Visa debit card in the world. So you can have something which you can go into a shop and buy things, and we have no access to your money. And I think that's really cool. Woo! <laughs> the technical language I'm going to use is it's the only non-custodial wallet to Visa debit card in the world. So you hold um, anything which is based on Ethereum, and you can spend it in the real world, and I can't touch your tokens. Um, we, and it's... And you don't even have to trust me when I say this. And this is what's made me super excited about this space and this technology. You can go have a look. And lots of people have looked at it. And please look and comment. Um, so it's an Ethereum native product. We only do Ethereum. And just to be clear, we're a centralized business trying to offer non-custodial services to users. I think and I hope within the next year, we'll be able to sack off our current accounts. I'll be able to take my salary in dollar pegs, in gold. And, either, and I won't have to have a current account. And that's kind of good. So if we're going to build a, a non-custodial banking replacement, I think one thing which is important there, one thing which kind of hits me up about the banking world right now, is this concept of participation. Um, I believe bankers are... In di their incentives are the direct opposite to my incentive models. What makes them rich makes me poorer as a banking customer. So we believe in participation. We have a token. Um, we, we're an early token raise. 1% of all usage of our platform goes into our token. And this is exactly what we promised in our white paper. We've delivered that. Um, so as you use our card, our token gets backed by, at the moment, ETH. DAI, Digix, DGD, NKR. Um, it's been live in the iOS app store now for, I don't know, a couple of months. And I think Android, we're going to start signing people up now. Um, so, yeah, I think if, if I'm going to build something which people can use and drives value, why, can't, why shouldn't everyone have skin in the game? And that's very interesting to me. Um, I think this is something which... Mel talked about our founder quite a lot, this concept of digital disruption. So this is some really bad quote by someone. Largest taxi company, no taxis. Largest accommodation provider, no accommodation on their books. Alibaba, Facebook creates no content. Um, Netflix owns no cinemas. And I think, what if the future bank holds no client assets? And we hold no client assets right now. And we can live in the real world, and that makes me excited. So what we've ended up building, we were, we're a UK-based company. We went through the FCA sandbox. That's our regulator. Um, we just presented our final report to the FCA last week, um, and we have to go ahead to keep going. I think... Pardon? The sandbox with? The, with the FCA. So it's the FCA sound so cohort it's four. No, other, no, other. no, this is us as a company, we're in the sandbox. Um, it was actually, yeah, and we're at the other side of it now. So just to be clear, our wallet, our crypto wallet, we have no access rights to. At the moment, the, the product, there's a fiat balance, which is held within a regulated bank, and that is custodial. That's a bank. So if you top up and put 200 pounds on it and use it, that's living with a bank. We have a model now and an implementation, a zero balance card, which um, Visa told us that as long as your regulator's happy, it's all kind of chicken and egg, but we're working towards having a zero balance card with no custodial access at all. And that's kind of exciting. Um, and I guess at a high level, we built Challenger Bank, which, and an Ethereum project, and that's really hard work. You have to interact with, on one side, the Visa network, which has its intricacies, KYC, AML. And on the other side, we've got Ethereum, which is this, I don't know, um, eventually consistent database. And that's really interesting. We've had to build our own kind of alternative to Truffle in Go, which Go we open source. Um, pardon? Go <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I didn't hear that. <laughs> um, maybe next slide. I think, um, yeah, we've got a customer service team in order to make Visa happy. We've had to go through a serious kind of due diligence on all sides. I think taking an, an ICO business um, and getting Visa to onboard us and the FCA to be happy with us has taken a lot of compliance work, lots of, you know, lots of learnings there. Um, we've had to build our own block parser because, um, yeah, the GEF and Parity um, JSON RPC just wouldn't do, actually. And I can talk about that um, later if anyone cares. We've done, um, yeah, lots of kind of compliance stuff, stuff which I'm, I don't come from a banking or compliance background. So I think, I think within the next year or so, I'll be able to suck off my bank and I'll be able to take a virtual sort code bank account, IBAN, receive that as an API call, realize that in some sort of digital asset which you hold in your wallet. And that's kind of cool. Um, it is kind of cool. Um, we're getting there slowly. So our Android app's coming out. DAP integration has become really easy for us, and loads of people are paving the way there for releasing our bug bounty. I think as it stands, we're a contract wallet, so interacting with other DAPs like Kickback we need to, you know, we need people like Wallet Connect and Ram and Wallet Connect and Pedro put together an EIP there um, to make the identity on Ethereum DApps be your contract wallet, not your externally owned address. So we're working on that. I think I like the Aztec protocol guys. I think the private transactions is something which we're very interested in. So thank you. I think the privacy post protocols is something else which I'm quite interested in at a more at a networking level. And I guess self-sovereign identity, I want to give a big bit of a shout out to people there. And the current FCA sandbox um, on Fido is pushing a self-sovereign identity piece with the consensus team at Uport and with the Evernim project. And I think there's the IDEN3 guys with Geordi um, building similar things. And I'm trying to find a way where I can minimize access to my users' data as well. So for me, the holy grail would be no access to my users' funds and not having to build this fountain of user data and be able to um, kind of build on top of um, data which is held by someone else. Trying to get the regulator over that hump, it's going to be hard. Um, so at the moment, we're live in the entirety of the EA. Um, we're working towards going live in other places. That's what's making me excited. And I think what I'm looking forward to is some recognition from the community. Um, you get one of our Android beta. It's just today is the first time, if you care, to play with the Android app. Um, <laughs>